Glad you're streaming with us. More than 900 people are now dead in Israel, along with hundreds of others in the Gaza Strip. And unfortunately, it's likely to get worse. So how did this happen and what happens next? To try to answer that question, let's bring in Edward Jeregin, former U.S. ambassador to Israel under President Clinton. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, thank you for being with us. You've said, obviously, as many others have, this was a colossal failure of Israeli intelligence. Uh, you know, it's a formidable operation, the Israeli intelligence agencies uh, that have protected that country against all kinds of threats for many, many years. This is really a shock, as in the words of people in Israel, a Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor moment. How do you think it happened at this point? What's your assessment of that? Well, not only is it a major failure of intelligence all around, but in my view, it's the failure of Israel's deterrence policy against Hamas, which goes way back to 2005 at least. Uh, this policy of keeping Hamas hemmed in in the Gaza Strip with intermittent uh, hostilities. There have been five wars between Israel and Hamas. And it's just a failed policy of deterrence. And this to me is even more important than the intelligence failure, because after the retaliations that are going to take place that, you're, that you and your, your commentators spoke of, what's the end game? I think it's going to be very difficult for the parties and the region to go back to the status quo ante, even if Israel goes in there and quote unquote dismantles Hamas, which will be a very difficult task and a very bloody one. What is the victory? How can you say that's a victory? Because the situation will remain the same. And the status quo that has existed for decades now has proven to be very, very unstable. In fact, I was taken by an Israeli military official saying uh, before th these incidents, this war, saying that Gaza is, an is a stable, unstable place. A sta unstable, stable place. Well, that cannot continue. And I think also that the implications and consequences of this current war between Hamas and Israel is going to have regional implications. So, okay, so then two questions for you. Let's start, we'll get to the regional implications in, in a minute, because of course there was this peace deal that was on the line with Saudi, Israel. But let, let's back up to, to your belief here with these 300 reserve troops that Netanyahu has now called for. Um, and, the, and the talk is, it, it's about dismantling Hamas. Do you believe there is going to be a ground offensive here? Do you believe that they can dismantle Hamas? And if indeed that does happen, what do you see as, I guess, the next moment in time, and of course, that folds into the regional question of, of what's going to happen here. Um, but why don't we stay focused on? Do you see a ground offensive about to happen? Do you see that entire area being occupied? And do you see Hamas being dismantled? If indeed uh, Israel moves its military troops on the ground and it becomes a ground offensive into Gaza, uh, then they will definitely tried to dismantle the whole infrastructure and the leadership uh, of, of Hamas. Whether that is going to happen or not, I cannot predict. But remember, Hamas is an organization. It has a following. It has external support. And so I'm a little skeptical if they can get, quote unquote, rid of Hamas. The second thing is that with the hostages that you've reported, the Israeli hostages in Hamas's hands, the Israelis have to calibrate very carefully what the consequences of a ground offensive would be. And if they do so, uh, Hamas may be, well resort to killing the uh, some of the hostages or all of the hostages. So that's another inhibiting factor. And I'm sure this is uh, being intensely uh, analyzed uh, in Israel now before they mount uh, what is going to be a major offensive against Gaza. But at the end of the day, is Israel going to reoccupy Gaza after 2005 when it left? Uh, we will see, but that would be that would 
also have major consequences. On that, if I could, uh, Mr. Ambassador, you know, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has said that this uh, that they are going to, quote, change the Middle East with their response to this, not just to dismantle Hamas, but to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And whatever he meant by it, change the Middle East. You were ambassador during the Oslo Accords. We remember those days. I mean, it, it's not like everything was hunky dory, but there was hope in the air, right? There was a sense that, hey, this this long, horrible, anguished uh, conflict might have a solution. That was in 1994, long time ago. Is there any way back to that sense? Once again, not like everything, you know, was going to rain flowers and candy, but that that maybe there would be peace. You make a very good point. There is no hope. There's no political horizon. There's no negotiating framework. Uh, there are no principles for a final settlement between Israel and the Palestinians that's on the table. The last negotiations of any sort was under the Obama administration in 2014. I firmly believe that the absence of diplomacy, the lack of leadership on all sides, on all sides, uh, has gotten us into this situation where the resort to terrorism, violence, war, has been the default option. We've got to get back to a political horizon, as impractical as that seems to, to, to be now in the midst of this, this, this horrible, uh, the horrible events we're witnessing, there is no military solution to this crisis. I remember when I was ambassador to Israel and Yitzhak Rabin was the prime minister, he made it, he told me once, he said, he said, Ed, there is no military solution to our conflict with the Palestinians. There has to be a political solution. And he sought a political solution. And as you know, he was assassinated by Israeli extremists for, for his position on that. So he gave his life for. we've got to get back to the negotiating table. Mm. We've right. got to get well. back to a political solution. Ambassador Jaredjan, we want to thank you very much for your experience and wisdom that you bring to this in this moment. Really appreciate it. I hope we can talk to you again. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.